Good morning, it's Joe with Joe Lee Farm. It is a bright, sunny morning. I'm squinting a little bit. I hope you'll forgive me. Thanks for uh, joining us today on our channel here in Ecuador. Um, we appreciate all your viewership. We appreciate your subscribing. More than anything, if you want to rage against the red machine, you can share our videos. And that's the best thing to make sure the people who need to see it get to see it. We can't rely on the red machine to do that for us. Um, there's a lot of game plan being played there so yeah if you don't mind sharing our videos we appreciate it surely you know somebody might benefit from it so these are our green beans that you saw us plant 14 days ago and you can see they're up and doing fine they're just doing wonderfully um, these beans are going to start blossoming in about a week and so uh, we're probably maybe two to three weeks away from uh, actually picking some beans so I would say that this is about 30 to 40 day um, from uh, seed to harvest. So that's a pretty good, uh, pretty fast crop. Um, on here, you'll see a little gap in the middle is because this is where I'm doing a little experiment. I'm doing a five rows of beans here and only four rows on this end. And so we talked about that a little bit. It matters if you're in an area where you don't get much breeze through here. If your plants are too close together, you could get some disease. We haven't really had that problem down here because we get so much wind in this area. One of the problems we do have is bugs. And I know you probably have those problems as well. So what we get a lot here on our green beans, there's two things. If you see the beans sprout up and something comes along and just chops them off at the ground, that's more than likely a pill bug or a roly-poly as some people call them. And so we use beer traps to take care of that. Have glad to report I have no really poly damage this year. Um, if you see just a, there's, I noticed one plant over here somewhere, right here, has a little tiny hole in it right there. That's a grasshopper that just came flying through here, stopped, took a little nibble and moved on. If you see entire leaves chewed away when the plants are young, that's gonna be the cabbage moth worm um, caterpillar, whatever you want to call him. And so we get the little white butterflies here that they call white butterflies. They're actually cabbage moths. And they will lay eggs on these plants and those little uh, eggs hatch into little worms that just t totally destroy your plants. So we're about to cover this with some garden mesh and we're going to show you how we do that. But one of the things that I do first is I spray with a product called BT. It's known as Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a harmless bacteria, harmless for humans and pets. It is on the organic certified list, if you will, the OMRI uh, approved list of products that you can use and still be organically certified. It's a bacteria that um, dries on the leaf and if the worm eats the leaf, it just kind of explodes inside and it dies. So it's a bacteria harmful only to those worms and not much else. So we like to use that before we apply our netting so we're not trapping some live worms in there um, and so that should take care of everything we want to put this on before the sun is hitting the plants so it gets time to dry so where our, this garden is located the sun just starts to hit at about 8 30 to 9 o'clock in the morning as you can see right now we got full sun so right now would not be the time to apply any type of spray because if you do it acts like a microscope and it burns the leaves just like you would burn ants with a microscope not saying i ever did that but, so we want to apply this while it's still, you know, no sun out and it has time to dry before the sun gets blistering hot on here. So we've done that. Now we're going to uh, apply the netting over the top to protect it from any future damage of whatever kind of bug might want to come this way. So you see we have these black hoops on here. So this is a piece of quarter inch rebar we bent and then we put poly pipe over the rebar. You don't have to do it that way. You could just use PVC or whatever you have available. Um, we do it this way, it's safe and easy. The rebar pokes way down to the ground and holds itself up nice and uh, we don't have to worry about it falling over too much. We do put strings on both ends to tie the end hoops back so they don't collapse inwards. And then we put three strings total to run down the middle here. Now what this does is if you put the, the insect mesh over the top of these hoops and you don't add these strings when it rains that insect mesh tends to hold water and it will start collapsing in as these plants get taller 
that means that wet insect mesh is going to be laying against plant leaves and that's going to be a good source for disease and you don't want that to happen. So we run these strings that basically just going to hold that netting from collapsing inwards. So it doesn't do that kind of thing. It's going to hold it out. You can adjust these strings up and down as necessary. We've just wrapped them around each pole and they'll slide if you want to make them slide. Um, we pull them kind of tight just so there's no sagging anywhere. And sometimes you have to come along and adjust. And then once we get the netting on, we put some bricks around the edges just to make sure nobody crawls up in there and, uh, and the, that the wind doesn't blow away the mesh netting. So that seems to work pretty well for us. It's not 100% bug proof, but it's pretty close. Um, we found very few make it into that netting. And it only takes a couple, by the way. Uh, but we've been pretty successful with it. These beans are going to produce for us for about 30 days worth of picking. So we'll get three or four pickings out of here before we start to see the plants come to the end of their life cycle. And in our last video on our pole bean picking, you saw some of the plants had some little yellowing around the edges. They're just flat getting old. We're letting them go to seed right now, and we're not even going to try to harvest anymore. That's just natural. They come to the end of their life cycle, and that, that's what they're going to do. All right, so Lisa and I are going to get started right now putting on this netting. Okay, well that didn't take too long. You can see we've got it up there. This is netting that's left over from, well, I guess we've been using this about two years now. So it holds up really well as long as there's nothing that's gonna snag it and tear it or anything, but it's, it's pretty tough netting, some kind of polyester. And it does allow a lot of uh, air to come through, allows rain to get in, but as I said, it will collect water and start to sag if you're not careful. So you can buy this, and I'll, I'll put a link in the description. And I'll put a little picture of it up here. You can buy this on Amazon, Johnny Seed, High Mowing Seed, probably all those places. Here in Ecuador, I haven't seen this lightweight netting like this. What they sell here is a lot heavier and it doesn't allow the air to go through as well. So I don't like to use the netting that they sell at the, uh, the ferreterias here. So the netting I have here, see we got a bee trapped in there. He'll have to get out. So uh, the netting I prefer is this garden netting, it's a lightweight mesh. So the great thing about green beans is they don't need to be pollinated by pollinators. They are self-pollinating. So even though we've enclosed them inside this netting, they will pollinate just fine. And uh, we don't need to let the bees in. We'll see if we can let this one out. Where'd he go? Come on, little guy. There he is right here. There, we let him out. How great was that? Okay. So uh, this is what we do. It works really well for us. I think it'll work well for you too. Let me know in the comments if you do something like this yourself. Thank you for watching. Ciao for now. <laughs>